can talk about this locality and uh, anybody else can jump in because a number of people have been here. So uh, this is Lake Elmer Thomas over here. This is a relatively new dam that's been constructed for it, but it, it, uh, it is a reconstruction of a dam that's been here for a while. Uh, and this, of course, is a quarry, but it's defunct. It hasn't been used in many, many years. But there are some remnants, like, a, like a steel pieces and, and cement from the quarry days. Very nice expression of the uh, Mount Scott granite here. So you can see the granite. You can get, get a handle on its texture. One thing that I've noted is that some of the oddities you found in the, find in the Mount Scott granite, and it really is fairly homogenous, except for this area over here. Start to see a few more mafic pieces in it. Uh, you get to see some pegmatitic pieces in it, uh, fine-grained dikes going through it occasionally. Uh, so a little bit of oddity going over here, but we are getting close to the contact. So the rail light is over there. That is not Scott Granite on the other side of the lake right here, but we're not far away from, from the end of it. So maybe this is a place we should see some discrepancies from run-of-the-mill Mount Scott. But what you'll see in it is the gray crystals, the gray ovoid crystals are very prominent right here. They're easy to pick out. You can find thumbprint sized mafic enclaves in this rock all over the place. Uh, bigger ones, as I said, towards the west. Um, so it's a very good expression of this. Uh, another thing that sticks out very well here, of course, are the, the sheet fractures going through the hillside. You can see that they're near parallel curvilinear fractures consistent with exfoliation, sort of mimicking the, the hillside topography, uh, with the presence of Med Little Medicine Creek over here. That's the, the creek that's been dammed up to form Lake Elmer Tommy. We'll follow Little Medicine Creek upstream to go see the next stop. So it's the same stream that's coming down here, uh, cutting down and giving us some unique expression. Uh, but again, uh, you can see that. One thing I find curious is, is the change as you move from the edge of the hillside in, into the interior. And then this region over here actually has a few more fractures. And then suddenly they're gone on, on the far, well not gone, but there are far fewer of them over to the west. Uh, but the reason why we're here, the granite's nice, and there's a couple of quarries like this into the granite where you can see fresh granite. But the reason why we're here are these two dikes. There's one over here. Oh. Tim's standing right next to it. So there's a small one over here and a larger one over there. And uh, yeah, I know, after stop one yesterday, you're like, so what? <laughs> <laughs> We've seen dikes. But these are diabase dikes. Um, they're very much like the other diabase dikes in here. They have, uh, uh, Barry Weaver did the composition on this and, and it was fairly consistent with a lot of the dikes he looked at. So I think they'd be more, I hate to say the word typical, I'm looking for Richard, but because he's, he's seen more tip, uh, atypical variations in dike compositions, but uh, more typical compositions of diabase in the region. Uh, and again, as I said, there's two of them. You can see them go up the quarry wall and they're kind of neat in the quarry wall. You do get, again, like Richard showed us at, at the last stop, the last geo stop, uh, the problem with the dikes when they reach the surface. Uh, if you're lucky, they form a trench that, or weather out in some way that you can see them. But in many cases, they become negative relief that quickly fills in with soils. Your best bet to find them is where there have been exploration pits for mining, or if you just happen to notice that the trees look particularly dense there, because uh, the, the, uh, they'll form nice soils, but they're very limited in scope. So uh, The one towards the west, has a slightly different attitude from the one in the east, but nonetheless, they're subparallel in nature, and they're not particularly thick. Um, if we just had this western one, we still wouldn't be here. It's really what's interesting about this eastern dike is the fact that it, it's got this in echelon fracture system in it where it's come up and screened in a piece of the granite in between it. So you have two lobes to this eastern dike one on this side and one on this side. And there are a number of cool features about this. So where to begin? One thing is if you march down towards the lake, you find out that they actually have a bottom. In fact, Molly is standing on one of the floors of the dike. It doesn't go any further down than where she's standing. Which means, that, I mean, there's no vertical expression locally for these dikes to continue down to the core of the earth, like we like to think about <laughs> dikes, okay? So these are moving 
laterally, at least here. There, this magma flow in here is moving from north to south and not up and down, at least in this area. Uh, and another thing you notice within the dike, you sort of have to look at microscopic samples of it, but in, in the, the guidebook, you sort of get a flavor from it from the thin section I picked. Uh, you see that the outside margin is chilled, uh, but there's no real flow sense to the plagiac clay spelt bars in the dike at all. And you might be able to pick up on that with a hand lens if you're really, really on top of it, but it does stand out in a thin section. So there is a chilled margin on it, and there, but there's no strong sense of flow lamination. Uh, I think it was John Hogan or Charles who pointed this out first. Basically says that these dikes are stuck here. They're not going anywhere else. They're not feeding anything else. This is just in place at this horizon, and that's it. We're done. We shut it off. It's all over. That may not be true elsewhere, but that certainly is the case. Why, why do you want to shut it off? No flow direction, so there's no no continuous flow, at least during crystallization and cooling. Yeah. Do you often see a lot of flow direction in your dive based dikes? I don't know. Do you often see a lot of flow direction in your dive based dikes? <laughs> no, I don't. All right. And I've sampled a hell of a lot of dikes in Africa dive based And they don't do it either? Well, I mean, nothing obvious. Okay. If one did it, you know, some magnetic you studies, you could yeah, pick magnetic. up on that. John, do you see a top to this, or, or do you just run no, an erosion problem? It just goes into the hillside, side, so okay. there, there's no top. You do have a base, but you do have a bottom. You have a bottom on both lobes, and it's it's offset, consistent with the opening of the structure. So. Uh, well, it's I mean obviously it's connected, but it's probably.